podcast is brought to you by Aldis International, supplying your expert AI and digital transformation staffing needs across the US and Europe. Today, you are listening to our AI in Action series, where leading minds in AI from across the world share their story, success, and advice. AI in Action cuts through the hype and explores the true impact of artificial intelligence in our world today. You're listening to AI in Action. I'm your host, JP Valentine. Our guest today is Dilian Kovacev. Dilian is the Director of Machine Learning and Analytics at Treasure Data. Dilian, welcome to the show. Thanks so much for having me, John. I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, we're delighted to have you. So Dilian, let's start with yourself, please. Could you give us an overview of your journey in technology from where you got started, some of the roles you've held along the way, and take us up to today as the Director of ML and Analytics at Treasure Data? So not to date myself too much and not to waste too much time, but it's been a long journey. I um, started in finance, working with a lot of financial data, and that was back in the day where data science was not a hot topic yet. And a lot of us were working in Excel where you could do up to a certain point of some like advanced formulas and macros. But over time, I switched from finance to working to MarTech, and that's where I really started really understanding the power of data and the digital era transformation where a lot of stuff moved online. And so that's where I really got to work with more data science teams. At the time I was running marketing campaigns and just trying to strategize and personalize and find ways to spend marketing budgets more efficiently. And data science teams were starting to use that data to actually optimize a lot of the processes. I actually, after working for a while with a variety of data science teams, like indirectly, not as part of them, more as an analyst, I decided to take a break from basically working and go back to school and learn Python and data science, because I really, I was really excited about the digital data transformation age and what you could do with, with the proper skills. So I knew that I had to upgrade my skills from. Excel and SQL to something more advanced. So I think this is where like the real journey began for me as I found my passion in data science and in, in programming. And I, I wish I had found it earlier in, in my life, but better late than never. And, <laughs> and so that has taken me then from switching from marketing to now working at Treasure Data, where I can use a lot of my previous experience in just understanding how companies use customer data and uh, being able to build a lot of solutions and help our customers enable their own use cases. Firstly, thank you for the background and yourself. I appreciate you sharing your journey and it really does explain how you've landed the role that you have at Treasure Data. We'll talk about your day-to-day in a moment, but first tell us all about Treasure Data, who you are as a business, what the mission of the organization is, and then we can talk about your role as the head of ML. Treasure Data is one of the original uh, CDP, customer data platform solutions in the market. And also another term you can hear or see mentioned applied to Treasure Data is a customer data cloud because that's the evolution. So in a few words, customer data platform basically makes it easy for organizations to bring all the data coming from different data sources, customer data like CRM, email activity web activity coming from different marketing tools and all sorts of data that might live in different silos and that might not be talking to each other or connected. We have all the tools and infrastructure to really quickly, easily, and efficiently bring that data, unify it. And then from that, it becomes your one-stop shop place where you can enable really hundreds of use cases. Three main branches of them are three products. We have our customer CDP for service, CDP for marketing, and CDP for sales. And that's just the way that pretty much the use cases are set up based on who is going to be the end user. And the main mission is to um, improve the connected customer experiences across all channels and just make more intelligence choices, make the customer experience more integrated by using all the information that, that we have on each of the customers. So that's more or less what it revolves around. So Dillian, you mentioned three different customer types, marketing, sales, and service. Could you give us an example in each of those categories of the customers who are coming to you and what their need is, what the problem is, and what Treasure Data is able to do for them and the subsequent result? 
Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So let's get an example. CDP for a service. Think about anytime you make a customer call to, uh, not going to mention any brands, but like, a, let's say a mass telecom company and they put you on hold for 30 minutes and then you give them all this information, they transfer it to someone and they have no idea who you are and you have to repeat yourself again, the phone gets disconnected, creates a lot of frustration, very bad, not personalized customer experiences. Now, CDP for service enables that information to be available to customer reps and service reps in real time. Where information on each user has been ingested in the platform can be made available where with a quick search when they see your caller ID, or maybe when you're calling, you have to provide like phone number or email or something. Then the service person on the other end could just type in into the system and the CDP will show them all the information they need to see. What are the latest, the last few calls that you had? What were they about? What kind of device you own? What are some of the issues that you might be calling about? So that's one example, just making that experience seamless and making you feel like the company really knows who you are and they're giving you a personal treatment. So that's service. Sales is again, similar. Like, like I said, again, the mission is create connected customer experiences and you do this by personalizing as much of the communication you can by using the, all the data that you have in the CDP. So for sales, it's around when to reach out to people, reaching out to them with the correct message, with the correct offer. So being able to, when a salesperson logs in during the day, they might be able to see like next best action recommendations coming from a specific machine learning model. It's best to call this person between the hours of so-and-so because that's when historically they've been responding to calls. It's best to reach out to them with this offer because the last thing they bought was this or they have actually filled out a newsletter or submitted like some kind of a form fill where they asked for a quote or a, you know, like a coupon code for some specific product, things like that. So again, CDP for sales just enables the sales teams to be able to engage better with existing and prospective customers and grow the customer loyalty, improve the customer experience. And then marketing is revolves around a lot of digital, not always, but a lot of digital marketing use cases. So it's about being able to use that data and um, build segments based on different business rules very easily. So the power of our platform is that all the data that behind a lot of the use cases, a lot of it could be, you know, very complex, can come in different formats, but the power of the platform is that there is a data engineering component that makes it really easy to unify, clean and process that data and that make that available in a very easy point and click UI format for uh, marketing teams that not, might not be as technical to be able to just point and click, create business rules, such as give me all the users who have bought this type of item in the last 10 days and who are also from a certain region, let's say, and target them with a specific personalized ad recommendation for similar products. So all of that could be really easily created. And again, you're creating personalized experiences. You make sure you're sending the right kind of emails with the right messages, or when the web page loads, you can personalize what, you know, the main load images or the screen based on people's interests. And there's a lot more use cases, but again, it just goes around making it feel like it's one seamless experience and the customer is getting the information they need that is most relevant to them so that they can take informed decisions uh, with the brand that they're interacting with. You are listening to the Aldis Podcast. When you're looking to scale your team or if you are interested in showcasing your company in a future episode, reach out today. Or if you're in the market for a new role, visit our website to view open positions, www.aldis.com. I want to spend some time now talking about the technology behind all of this and in part your role as, as the director of machine learning. Can you describe the, the broader AI machine learning data science team at Treasure Data from how many people are involved, the various positions, what it looks like day to day, and then your overall involvement as the director of ML? Absolutely. So there's actually two major teams because Treasure Data has a huge presence in Japan and that's where some of the founders are from and we have a huge, um, huge amount of customers there. There is one ML team in Japan. I work with them collaborating on some R and D projects. We build some things together, but I don't manage that team. Uh, 
the team that I manage is based in the um, US and in and, and India. And so we have currently four employees, three are data scientists, machine learning engineer, and one is analytics engineer. And uh, they focus more on optimizing pipelines for uh, reporting and building all sorts of custom dashboards that, you know, are useful to um, customers across different industries and a variety of use cases. And, and the rest, three of us, mostly build machine learning models, do R&D and develop new machine learning models, as well as we work directly with customers to help them deploy their machine learning models uh, and reporting solutions on the platform. So Dillian, staying on the topic then of, of team, you're obviously uh, overseeing a, a lot of the, the major projects and also managing the individuals across various locations, which you mentioned. When you look at the success Treasure Data has had up to this point, uh, and you now start to look ahead at the roadmap over the next 12 to 24 months, what growth are you expecting to see within your own AI ML team? And what are some of the milestones that you're working towards a, as an organization? The growth of the team has been really good so far. Actually, I started the team in the US from scratch. There wasn't, when I started around four years ago, there was only the ML team in Japan. And because I was coming from a data science background, I was able to learn about a lot of use cases and things that customer wanted to do with their data. And so I started developing one by one solutions and through proving the value and getting a lot of customers excited about our machine learning solution, I was actually able to start growing that team and getting more resources to hire more people, improve some of the technology so we could build, you know, more complex models at scale, build them faster, build them on larger data volumes. And so this is what our trajectory has been, make more of the solutions parameterized, scalable, make them as much as possible, almost like UI based where once we build the solution, you could just change a few parameters in like a config file and enable non-technical people to use these solutions and output intuitive dashboards and visualizations so that when the machine learning model is done, they can actually quickly understand the output in more layman's terms and know how to use the insights or the recommendations or the predictions of the model to then enable use cases as a non-technical user. So. Really the roadmap and the way we're thinking about what we're excited about is just doing more of enablement of machine learning use cases for non-technical users, because that's the best way to scale since the demand is really high and it doesn't really matter like how many people we hire. We have like over, you know, 400, 500 customers and as the demand for ML based use cases is growing. It's like a single team cannot support every customer, build everything end to end. So our focus really is on, on making sure that we can, uh, apply a lot of these solutions more easily across a wider range of customers. So this is really where a lot of our work is going. And we have a few initiatives that, and products that will be released in the coming quarters that will make that even easier in terms of, you know, just having kind of a UI based, uh, uh, machine learning and analytics enablement, where a lot of these solutions will be standardized and will be able to be set up by a less technical people. Final question for me then, Dillian, when you are building the team, which you've done successfully up to this point, starting from scratch, you obviously have to talk to candidates about the work, the environment, the mission, and get them interested and excited to join Treasure Data over some of the other great opportunities available. What is it that you say to candidates? What If you were speaking to a, the ideal candidate right now for a position that was open, what would you tell them about the mission, the work at Treasure Data to get them interested to join you guys over some of the other great opportunities available to them? Yeah, great question. I will... Every person that currently is on my team, when I have interviewed them, culture and work and all these things have been very important. So based on my experience, what I'd like to share is that, um, it's like a very fast paced collaborative environment. So if you are excited about data and about emerging technologies and just learning every single day, Treasure Data is a great place to do that. It's a very open communicative, collaborative environment, a lot of extremely smart people. I've learned a ton from everyone at Treasure Data. There is a lot of open communication. 
via different, you know, company channels as well as people document things very well. So it's really a great place to learn. Also, I think you never get bored because like I said, the core of our product is enabling connected customer experiences using as much customer data as possible to as intelligence. And because we work with, like I said, over four or 500 major brands across all verticals, some fortune 500, a lot of top 2000, and you get such a wide range of data that you work with and use cases. And there's so many new problems to solve that really like you never get bored and you get a lot of hands-on experience and exposure to a lot of different business problems. And I think that's like the most exciting thing for me and for anyone who is excited about data and solving problems with data, you just get really good access to that, to like a wide variety of those, of those use cases and that data. So you can do a lot with your creativity, with your experience, you can really add a lot of value since a lot of the problems you're solving too are like pain points for customers and things that they haven't done before. So once you enable a use case, there is real value and gratification in seeing that solution generate value for the customer. Thank you so much for coming on today and talking to us. It was great to learn about your own background, your journey to where you are today. Great to understand the environment and the work you're doing at Treasure Data and the various applications available. You've obviously built an amazing team from the ground up yourself and continue to do so. And obviously with the roadmap in store, a lot more opportunity for people to come and join you over the next 12 to 24 months. So. We wish you, the team, and everyone at Treasure Data the best of luck in the months and years to come and look forward to having you back on the show. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to be here. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Oldest Podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review. We are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and any Android podcast of choice. You can also head over to our website, www.aldis.com to listen to more podcasts, view our open roles, and stay up to date with industry news. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for more great episodes coming very soon.